Hey folks, it's IOE throwing back with some more World of Tanks. So as you can see, this is Alex the Assassin. He's in his T-54 Mod 1, and this is a tier 9 game on El Hulouf. Um, This is one of the older maps in the game, and actually, in all honesty, this is my favorite map to play on as almost every tank. Um, I can't actually think of one where this isn't my favorite map to play on. Light tanks have this great place down here where they can go and have fun and battle and spot and whatnot. Meme tanks can take advantage of areas over here and over here to dominate the game. Um, as well as, you know, heavy tanks being able to slug it out. Artillery, there are some great spots to take advantage of over here where people don't really think of. Tank destroyers, of course, in and around everywhere. Um, so just, I love the balance of this map and uh, some of the history. This has been historically one of my favorite skating maps. So I think that's a long enough rant for something that has nothing to do with this video. Um, so Alex is, is joining us in the mod one, which is the tier eight um, T54. And ooh, we spotted a type 62, except Somehow, because he auto-aimed and then backed up at the same time as he fired, we missed that shot. Should have been a, a connection if he'd been still... Ooh, Progetto coming flying in here. Uh, we get the first shot off the course of Progetto. is an auto-loader. Of course, it's apparently an auto-loader that's trying to get, commit suicide as it jumps off a cliff sideways. Yep. He didn't die. Never mind, he did die. <laughs> Not quite sure what he was thinking. As we again bounce around. Um, so as long as people are shooting us in the turret, we have a fair chance of bouncing these rounds. As f especially from equal or lower tiers. Um, oh, Type 49. Um, type, no, yeah, T49. Unfortunately, not going to get the shell in. So not going to do anything to that guy. Unless, of course, he... Mm, yeah. Possibility we, we could hit that shot, but... Ooh, this shot's a lot more likely. Especially with him running in a straight line and all. And apparently he's... Nope, not going to keep doing it. IS-2, though, is going to peek up over the ridge, give us an opportunity to hit him in that cupola. And he is going to do it again. Unfortunately, because the gun depression on this tank is so bad, uh, we really do have to show a ma vast majority of our side before we can do anything. Thankfully, though, the IS-2 has a similar gun depression issue, and so he had to come all the way over that rise in order to put that shot into us. Nice shot into the tracks of the T-28. Unfortunately, a repair kit lets it move again, and we would have got shot if not for the friendly Progetto saving our lives. Well, not really our... Ow! Okay, yeah, saving our lives because that shot from the uh, 53 was already in the air, I'm sure. Okay. As he complains about the artillery, he goes ahead and starts advancing on the C-28. This is a bad idea, by the way. Uh, you... Whew. You got lucky, sir. He, he shot you a snapshot into the side of your um, turret. Throws bound to bounce. Whereas, you could be heading around the backside of him. Uh, where this Progetto is gone, you had more than enough time to get there, and then you'd have free reign into the back of him, which would be amazing. I don't know why this Progetto isn't attacking. Um. Oh, hi! Two Scorpion Gs lined up, ready to go, and apparently both of them miss. Or no, one of them missed, and the other bounced off of us somehow. Jeez, off the other side of the turret. <laughs> you being so lucky with people shooting the sides of the turret instead of oh anywhere they could pen. Oh wow, those two scorpions lined up ready to go. Um, I I thought they were gonna punch the ticket, our ticket. I don't know why they didn't, but uh, they obviously weren't really ready or something. This guy's just fired, so we can. We know we can advance and put a round into him. HE is loaded, so we're going to do a little more damage than normal. Assuming, of course, we'll let we pen. And now that he's loaded, he wants to charge, um, obviously. Ooh, 
that hopefully destroyed his gun. Yeah, that's maybe. I don't know. 322 damage. I'll take that shot. Unfortunately, though, for us, somebody else finishes him off. And now there's only five targets left on the enemy team. And at least two of them are over at our base. So that doesn't leave many options for us to get shots in. Though we are going to get that kill as somebody pegs him just before we do. And now we're pushing up on what we know is there. there's a T-29 at the back of their base. This is not a good location for any tank that is trying to push forward. This is actually a great location for a defensive tank, though. Um, and I'm pretty sure he's been there most of the game. So he doesn't care about winning. Oh, look! He's actually pushed forward. He's down into the worst possible spot at this particular point in the game. Um, so he definitely doesn't care about winning. <laughs> if he did, he would have been up with the... Um, up with the rest of the heavies, up where they should have been. The funny thing about this game is if he was paired up with that IS-2, and they were both pushing at the same time, that T-28 would have crushed us. Because all we would have seen is the top of his turret, as he put his gun mantle over that ridge line, And he just would have farmed damage off of us. Uh, and anyone else who was trying that push, by the way. But because he decided that um, he was too cowardly to fight, and he got caught in the... Uh, don't, Almost got killed there. Um, and, and he put himself in this position. He is just going to die without ever causing anyone any real pain. Oh, yeah, that snapshot. Uh, well, not really a snapshot, but. Well done sneaking that kill him. Uh, so, ooh, the Warren's over here. Ooh, Warren's over here. This is going to be an issue because actually that thing is quite fast. And unless you can um, basically hit it and pull back before it come around that corner, you're going to have issues. Uh, ooh, he managed to duck down as he fired over top of us, and now I'm just going to go ahead and pop it for the win. Nice job. Um, don't jump off that cliff, or this will be an unfortunate game. Oh, is the WZ take a snapshot at us? That means he can see us. He's got to be on this ridge line somewhere. Um, we don't know where that shot came from, but obviously he could see us there for a second. Hopefully he still can't. Though Alex is aiming him because, of course, he knows the target's going to get lit for a second or two. And if we can take that shot before the Pajetto, we can still get that kill. Um. Oh, no! Wrong time to be reloading. Oh, Pichetto fires over top and misses. We bounce with a gold shell. WZ takes out the IS. And then we take him out of the game. That was actually an excellent place to be for that WZ. Uh, the Pichetto wasn't expecting him to be there. He probably spotted that entire ridge line um, when he came through here. But because the WZ was tucked down just under the ridge line... Uh, the Pajero decided he wasn't there, and he, he went the wrong way. And then, of course, the IS spots him, but dies in the process. WZ gets something out of us. Thankfully, though, we managed to get something out of it, too. I so can't believe that first gold round bounce. That was great. Okay, let's jump over to the battle results and see what he got. Does the Pajero accept his assistance and hit the Brothers on Arms medal? Or, um... Is this just another game where you could have had a Brothers in Arms, but you, your team didn't respond in time? We'll have to see. <laughs> Ace Tanker, Bruiser, Duos, Fighter, Fire Effect, Shellproof, Three Bonds, the Scucci, Spartan, Confederate, and High Caliber Wards. Unfortunately, though, no Brothers in Arms. So, no, the, um, Pajero did not, in fact, re um, respond in time. Uh, one tiny bit of historical nature, um, and something I think is kind of ironic. He has dealt damage to the shadow here. This is the guy we, we did a ton of, um, damage to at the beginning, and then basically, uh, told him to back off a cliff, and he did, kind of thing. Um, this guy is actually in harms, which is the clan Alex used to be a part of. And so I think that's funny, personally. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that particular clanmate was not having his best day, or isn't the brightest. I don't know which, but 
running yourself off a cliff, not generally the best plan in the world. Also, charging a T-54 mod 1 in, in a Progetto, and then not bothering to shoot until he's looking at you, not a great plan either. Uh, 4,600 damage. Ah, uh, right. Of course, you got that less, but a little bit of damage on the WZ. I was thinking that for a second, I'm like, wait, I thought he was at 4,400 last I looked. And he was, of course, but that was before the WZ died. WZ by far carrying his team in damage, John. Unfortunately, though, for him, not quite enough as we, uh, we definitely carried our team a lot harder. Though you can see how many people on both teams did next to nothing in this game. And that's really just the way it worked out. 1300 damage blocked by armor. That's exceptional. And the reason that we won this game, uh, because of course we did so much damage after uh, receiving that hit from our trailer and being down to just 100 health. Uh, if uh, either one of those Progetto hits or a T62 shot, Type 62 shot had made its way in instead of bouncing, then this would have been a different game entirely and a lot less fun to watch, to be honest. But thank you all for watching. Thank you, Alex, for saying this in. I can't wait to see your next game, sir. And I will uh, talk to you all later. This IOE threat.